if bacon died under like stressful situations because next time if you fry some bacon and you lay it in the skillet if if it just mellows out under the heat like if it accepts death it had a happy life yeah. that bacon that crinkles up and roll over and all of that that's stressed bacon man I ain't a rapper, I'm the motherfucking father. I ain't a coward, I'm the motherfucking father. I ain't your mama, I'm the motherfucking father. I ain't your daddy, I'm the motherfucking father. I ain't your brother or your sister, I'm the father. Yo, what's up, y'all? My name is Ellie San Diego, and I'm here representing Valid313.com. So very excited because today I'm going around the city to meet up with some of Detroit's most prominent artists, producers, engineers and masterminds. We got Fat Father, we got Eddie Logic, DJ Head, and Nick Speed. Hey, what's so up, y'all? I am sitting here with one of Detroit's living legends and a good friend of mine, and his name is Fat Father. What's up, Fat Father? How you doing? Oh, I'm going good. It's early. <laughs> it is early in the morning. <laughs> we up and out of for real. <laughs> Yeah, haven't even had my bacon yet. Haven't even had your bacon. Like, how did how did you come with the name Fat Father? How did you what 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 made you do that? Was that your first name for rap or? What, well, actually, it initially it had nothing to do with children. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Just around the time I was in high school, like I had this. I was always the fat kid. You know what I'm saying? Like like in gym class, like they used to always put me on the team that was skins for shirts and skins just so the teacher could laugh at me. So, um, and this is real life though. This is real life. I don't care though, but you know what I'm saying? I developed this confidence that was just unknown for the fat world. Like, it was unbelievable. People, I remember females looking at me like, I don't believe he has the audacity to believe that he looks this good. <laughs> and it was just amazing. So at, at that point, I felt like I had created my own genre of fat. So I feel like I fathered a whole new brand of fat. So I became the fat father. Got you and it's with it's, two T's. With two T's. Don't two forget T's. the T, the extra T, because that's very important. And it's crazy because I was actually gonna ask you about that. Like you are comfortable, you so comfortable and confident in your own skin, and you make that you embody that. Like it's like you you're so comfortable to the point where um you made it work for you. So before you did build that confidence, was there a pain that was there or or, or were you always kind of confident in that? Yeah, I think I was always kind of confident. You know, I just had to, uh, I had to take it to the next level. I had the, the, the foundation of the confidence, you know what I'm saying? But at some point in my life, I said, you know, screw it, I'm going to take off my shirt in public, on stage, in front of thousands of people. And once I did that and I heard women going crazy, it was confirmed <laughs> that yeah. the fat that I possess is amazing and some sort of superpower. So I embodied it and exploited so it. So when did the music come? Did it come before the confidence or after the confidence? Or did it kind of just all mesh together at the same time? Oh, the time? music came a long time. I've been, I've actually been recording uh, professionally you know, well, in a professional environment since I was about 14 years old. I was in a group called The Foundation back in the day uh, with Chaos from Chaos and Maestro and uh, Anthony Singleton and, and my man Lovejoy and my man Chris Cobb. It, you know, it was a lot of us. So that, that was kind of my grooming period. That's when I learned what an ad lib was. You know what I'm saying? And then from there... It, I moved on. I was with a group called the Teamsters that my man Cobb and my man Hoffa, the president, started. And that it's like all of that prepared me for the Fat Killer mission. And shout out to my uncle T Money because if it wasn't for T Money, I would have never picked up a microphone. My uncle is a DJ and he uh he was in his room mixing and I went in there and I picked up the mic and I stood around and he was like, Yo, that's like whack as hell. 
<laughs> Maybe get some. Oh, okay, so. your artwork for your um, your albums and mixtapes and things of that nature. When I look at your uh, videos, it's pretty cohesive and it looks really, really good. What what is your artistic mindset um, as you or someone else puts those ideas together to kind of make it what you want to, you know, kind of represent your brand? Well, first, let me say this, like. Uh, like we said, you know, before, the, the original meaning of my name had nothing to do with children. But I feel like the creator had a plan for me. Because that's where it ended. And like my passion for fatherhood is just through the roof. You know what I'm saying? I love nothing more than my children. And I feel like they are two of they are the, the best songs that I ever wrote. You know what I'm saying? And they're both great singles. Hey, and you know what? Real quick, I want to shout out my kids right now. Um, the other day, we, we was riding, you know what I'm saying? And my son saw this dude holding a homeless sign. Dude said, you know, he was hungry or whatever. So we went past, we got on the freeway. We like 10 miles down the freeway. I look in the back seat. My son is crying like he's crying like somebody just slapped him in the face. I'm like, what's wrong? He's like, Daddy, you ain't see that sign? That man don't have nowhere to live. Like his heart was broke. You know what I'm saying? So I say, hey, man, you know, you want to go back and give me some money to get something to eat? So he reaches in his pocket. He's like, well, I got this $2. Now, this is a six-year-old. You know what I'm saying? So we came up off the freeway, drove all the way back downtown Detroit. You know what I'm saying? My daughter reaching her little purse. She like, well, I got two on it. She's eight. You know what I'm saying? So I pulled out some money. I put something with it. We drove all the way back downtown. Give my man some money so he can eat. And like, it was inspirational to me. Like, because they were so pure in this. You know what I'm saying? Like, adults, they get caught up in the... They, they you know, some of them give like it's genuine. But it's always a I did that. It wasn't that for them. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm they saying? They were concerned about that man. Yeah. Being able to eat. They wasn't concerned about like you know a lot of people say I heard people say stuff like, what if this is God testing you or I'm gonna get my blessings back? Like they didn't care about none of that. Right. They was genuinely worried about the man. Yeah. That's you know what I'm saying? And so I say all that to say. I wrote them songs. Holla. <laughs> and shout out to Valid for looking like Patrick Swayze in Roadhouse. <laughs> what about family life? What about growing up? I know you touch on a lot of that um, in, in a lot of your music. Um, even in uh, Tomorrow with Monica Blair and things of that nature. What was the family life like and how did that inspire more music? Well, you know, a single mother, you know, who who just grinded hard. Three boys, you know what I'm saying? And it was times where we were, we were down bad. Like, I remember my mother starting over from scratch and me, her, and, and my brothers in a shelter and we had nothing. We had nothing but the clothes on our back and maybe a, another garbage bag full of clothes. You know what I'm saying? And, and then she was able to get uh, a house, but we had nothing in it. Like nothing. You know what I'm saying? And and it, and I want to shout out my fifth grade teacher too, Mary Ann Morandi, wherever she may be. Because this lady used to, the house we were living in was out of district. She used to come pick me up and drop me back off at home every day so I could stay in the same school. But we had nothing in this house, but I had a bedroom, you know what I'm saying? So the, the way that I decorated my room and tried to make it home was I used to write poetry and, and little rhymes and I would tape all of them to my wall and like that made it feel like it was mine. You know what I'm saying? So my mama, like, she embraced all of that and took us to where we needed to be because of her you know, grind. Me, my brothers, and my mother. And she made it happen and got us here. Now, unfortunately, my brother, who's four years younger than me, we all four years apart, he got, he was murdered. on my, He died on my mother's birthday in 2003. You know what I'm saying? And 
I I watched her like I watched it take something out of her, but she still stayed solid for me and my brother Jerry. You know what I'm saying? So I gotta say, my mama. To answer that question, home life, growing up, my mama. Thick cut, <laughs> thick cut, uh, maple. Maple. Oh, I love it. I love it. It's so sexy. I'm telling you. That, listen, listen. Let me tell you something. When I say I love strippers, I am not talking about naked women. I'm talking about those beautiful strips of bacon because those are my strippers. And the way they twerk under fire and the way they pop it. Oh my God. Don't nobody, can't no woman pop it like bacon pop it. Oh, I, I get so excited when. It's some mornings I wake up, I feel like I don't smell bacon. Maybe this is God telling me to go back to sleep. <laughs> I kind of feel like that. Oh, man. Oh. Yeah, I love bacon. I really do. That's amazing. I, I'm thinking about changing my rap name, though. I have an alias. They call me Two Pork Shakir. We have this little thing that we do every time we do an interview. And we say little words, and then we have you say the thing that comes to your mind first. Uh, so we're gonna do just like a quick little thing. So, okay. um, so Africa. Me. Street life. Oh, that was a <laughs> hustle. <laughs> Detroit. Hip hop. Miss Corona. Cousin. <laughs> literally. That is literally his cousin. <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. That is awesome. Okay. Um. Eminem. Uh, uh, help. Proof. Legend. J. Dilla. Legend. Nick Speed. Legend. Uh, Valid. He hustles hard. One word cannot explain this man. Let me elaborate on this. If most of y'all had the hustle that Valid has, y'all would be successful. But since you don't, I kind of feel for you. But this man goes so hard and genuinely loves what he does and is very passionate about it. So one word can't explain that.